Good afternoon to all of you. Sri Surendra Patel ji, BG Patel ji, Nagin Bhai Patel, MC Patel, Kosta ji, and all the students of this Charotar University of Science and Technology, and all the people who are gathered here today. It's indeed a great privilege and honor to be amongst you today and talk to you about the Indian Space Program, what it has done and how it has grown over the years. At the outset, I would like to thank Kosta Ji for uh, giving me this opportunity and also Mohan Bhai Patel, <laughs> whom I met in Mumbai. And as a result of that, today I am here amongst you. As all of you are aware, today we are in a society where the living standards of people have reached a certain level. And if that has happened, it is because of what science has realized and what technology has converted that scientific findings into the facilities and how it has enabled people to make use of these technological developments. Today, each one of us can see in our palms what is happening anywhere in the world almost at the same instant. The entire world is in your hands in that sense. Situation was not like this always. Earlier, in the mid-70s, if you were to talk to somebody who is close to you, who is away, maybe a few hundreds or few thousand kilometers away, what was required was what is called a person-to-person -person call, go to a telegraph office, wait, make a book, booking, person-to-person -person call booking, wait for a few hours. If you are lucky, you will get through. Otherwise, you go back and come another day and repeat the whole process. In 1957, all of you are aware, the first object was put into space by Russians, Sputnik. And when this happened, there were people in the world like Arthur Clarke who had already told that you can make use of objects in space as a tower, tower at a height of 36,000 kilometers from which you can do line of sight communication for one third of the globe. So when the first Sputnik went up and in the initial years, when Russians or Americans were competing with each other to demonstrate who is more powerful and who is more capable. We had in our country, son of the soil of Gujarat, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who was looking at how a new technology, how a new technology like the space technology can be harnessed for our country's development. And it was his vision that brought in Indian Space Research Organization and use of a new technology for development in our country. He was able to convince his friends from Russia, Germany, America, France, and he convinced them that in India we have a place near Tumba where there is a unique opportunity for doing upper atmospheric research. And this upper atmospheric research can be conducted using sounding rockets. So initially he convinced them and brought to India a set of, you can say, assembly kits, sounding rockets and all the technology required for monitoring, receiving signals from that. And on November 23rd, 1963, there was a first sounding rocket which went up from our soil in Tumba Equatorial rocket launching site. Starting from that, the technology of space technology was slowly built up and from the sounding rockets, the activity started. It started in a, village, in a church in the beaches of Tumba and the assembly activity was done in that church. Subsequent to that, in a matter of 
five decades in 2013 when we had on the 5th of november our mars mission satellite put into orbit by our polar satellite launch vehicle the entire hardware the rocket the satellite the instruments on the satellite the ground station equipment this entire thing was indigenously done how starting from a beginning of a remote place in a church assembling sounding rockets to the kind of thing that we have today in space technology how this was achieved is actually worth listening to initially after bringing in the initial the sounding rocket one of the key things vikram sarabhai was working for was like i said in the early 70s india had only in four metro cities opportunity to look at broadcasting television broadcasting and none of the other places whether it's ahmedabad or bangalore or any other place they had no opportunity to see that it was only in mumbai chennai delhi and kolkata that opportunity was there so what uh, dr sarabhai did was he was able to convince americans americans were building a new satellite an advanced technology satellite called atsf or ats6 advanced technology satellite and in this there was going to be a large size antenna and a broadcasting capability and he convinced them that in india we will conduct an experiment using this satellite we will demonstrate the capability of having a satellite acting like a tower at 36000 km each one of you are aware that at 36000 km the satellite orbits around the it takes exactly 24 hours and as the earth also rotates at exactly the same speed of 24 hours the satellite looks stationary to us and because of that it acts like a tower and one third of the globe gets covered in that so he was able to convince them that we will do an experiment called sight satellite instruction and television experiment in 1975 for one year isro conducted an experiment where in 2400 villages of our country 2400 very remote places where there is no power available in those places using what you today you are aware that direct to home television you are seeing and you are making use of it in 1975 isro made it happen instead of calling it as direct to home at that time it was called direct to community because village as an entity was receiving that you had chicken mesh antenna and then black and white tv sets from ecil and all the front end hardware which was required was realized at the space application center here and equivalent of battery backup all this was done and in 2400 villages for about 10 year using this advanced technology satellite it was moved over the indian longitude and villages were given an opportunity to hear and learn about whether it is family welfare or agricultural practices and how you can make use of better technology for agriculture was showcased to them and as you can easily visualize any buddy who is in the political arena if he is told that what he is speaking is going to be heard over the entire country at the same time you don't need much more convincing for them to adopt that technology so the government was easily convinced that space technology is the way to go ahead because otherwise the terrestrial technology which existed if we were to use that and make the entire country covered with broadcasting it would have taken many decades and the insat series of satellite communication was approved and here again the innovative approach of people at isro how it made a difference was like what vikram saraba had said that we should make use of the technology and we should be second to none in using the technology for bringing the benefits to the society so the site experiment which was conducted was the first of its kind anywhere in the world even in largest socio technological experiment with the maximum reach of a country like india 2400 villages and then 
the satellites that were built in the first generation insat series was again a very innovative approach because at that point of time communication broadcasting telephone network as well as meteorology all the three were incorporated in a single satellite system you can easily imagine if all of these three were to be done in three independent satellites and three independent satellites had to be launched obviously we need much more money so the what isro conceived was a three in one satellite and since up to that point of time such a complicated satellite had not been built we went for getting it done through an american company even though america that american company also since it had not done anything similar to that earlier they had to struggle but the point is that what isro was doing was not just adopting what is available but making sure using the technology and the information conceive something which did not exist at that point of time and make it happen that is a innovative approach it took and very soon we had the first generation of insat satellites which provided broadcasting communication as well as meteorology meteorology also what was important you can visualize we used to have earlier years a super cyclone if it comes there used to be loss of life in tens of thousands but in the recent past none of the super cyclones have resulted in loss of life simply because we are now in a position to tell exactly where the cyclone landfall is going to be at least 48 to 96 hours in advance with a location accuracy of better than 20 km and a time of occurrence of better than half an hour this gives enough time for the disaster relief agencies to evacuate the people and ensure loss of life is saved of course loss of property still cannot be prevented because of the fury of nature but human life definitely gets saved and so this insat series with 3 in 1 was built first generation from an inter american company but the second generation satellites insat 2 series onwards all the satellites are built in the country from that time till today whatever communication or meteorological satellites we are building has all been realized within the country in the same way we also made use of the initial opportunities that were available like the soviets had offered that we will launch a couple of satellites for you indo soviet friendship our postaji was very much part of those initial days where like the launch vehicle or the sounding rockets activity started in the church the satellite activity started in bangalore in the industrial sheds of pinya industrial sheds where practically nothing was there within a very short time satellite building started satellite technology was started initially we had aryabhata and bhaskara launch and subsequently the indian remote sensing satellite series was built so isro made use of all the opportunities available to it there was also an opportunity which was available where arian a company which launches the satellites they were in the initial phase of building their rockets they said they said in one of their initial development flights there is an opportunity for somebody to put a satellite because as you can visualize the initial development flight there is a risk you are not sure the launch vehicle is succeed is going to succeed or not so they were themselves not prepared to risk a satellite being put on such a launch vehicle so they made an offer and isro grabbed that opportunity and realized apple aerial passenger payload experiment a three axis stabilized satellite was built and this was launched using the aerian and like this with every opportunity that was accessible it started developing the technology and to put all these satellites into orbit you also need launch vehicles that's how the initially the satellite launch vehicle was started it was improved to augmented satellite launch vehicle then the polar satellite launch vehicle today we are also talking about geostationary satellite launch vehicle mark 2 and mark 3 you can also easily imagine that the launch vehicle technology is a technology by virtue of its capability to do many things other than just putting orbit into orbit satellite 
the technology is not easily accessible. You have to build it on your own. You have to realize the thing on your, by your own efforts. So starting from a simple SLV, today what ISRO has demonstrated in the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is just yesterday we had the 37th consecutively successful launch of PSLV. And today this launch vehicle is considered as one of the most reliable launch vehicles. And because of the shortage of launch capacity, there is a very significant demand. And apart from our own satellites, we have also launched more than 79 satellites for other countries, about 21 countries, including United States, Germany, and many other countries. All of this is while we are building our own capability to put the satellites into orbit and making sure that you realize the technology. And with each polar satellite launch vehicle, we are building newer and newer capability. And for example, in the last year or in this year, one of the capabilities we demonstrated is you can put satellites, multiple satellites into orbit and multiple satellites into different orbits, not the same altitude or not the same inclination. This also requires certain additional capabilities on the launch vehicle. You need to reorient, you need to restart. So many of these things were demonstrated. Even in yesterday's launch, what we have demonstrated is a Vikram processor. After Vikram Sarabhai, it's called Vikram processor. This is a processor which actually controls the guidance and the total operation of the launch vehicle from the time it starts ground ignition till it releases the satellite. All the control functions, processing of the navigation signal, everything is performed by this processor. We have realized such a processor using our own semiconductor laboratory in Chandigarh with a 180 nanometer technology. 